Sachin Littlefeather showed up at the 1973 Oscars in place of award winner Marlon Brando. Her appearance was a protest against Native American stereotypes in Hollywood. But the old guard was not happy, and there was a backlash. In the words of the Academy, that appearance resulted with Littlefeather being boycotted professionally and attacked personally for the last 50 years. In a recent apology, the Academy explained it's now committed to stand with indigenous voices and dedicated to fostering an inclusive industry. And the good news is that it's already begun to back up that claim. Janet Yang has been elected as Academy President. She's the first Asian American woman to take that title. After the Oscars So White movement, the Academy announced it was taking measures to bring diversity to its operations. And news outlets say it's been good on that promise. Reportedly, since 2020, the Academy has doubled the number of its female and non-white members. That in turn has pushed the number of members from 6,000 to 10,000. Yang's election is hailed as the latest stride in that direction. Her peers say she has already paid her dues through her work on member recruitment and the board. Vanity Fair adds that she's also famous for mentoring Asian American filmmakers and is involved in organizations like Gold House, which promote diversity. So with the apology to Little Feather and Yang's presidency, the tide for equality at the Academy may eventually be turning for the better. Let's turn to journalist Sarah Teta. Hi, Sarah. Very good to have you with us today. Thanks so much. Now, the Academy, for the first time in its history, has an Asian-American woman as the president. Well, it's great, of course, but I want to start with this. Why did it take such a long time? I think it's such great news that Janet Young has been appointed as a president. It's amazing. But you're right, it has been a long time coming. And for that, we're very thankful. I think in Hollywood, it's important to look at the future. It has taken a long time to get this to this point. But alas, we are here and now we have to celebrate. I'm so excited to see what she's going to bring to the table. And also very excited for the young people up and coming who have got someone to aspire to. I have many Asian friends who, are, who, who often say, oh, in TV, where, where are our role models? Who can we aspire to? And now Janet has been given this amazing position, sat at the top of the table, and I know she's got so many great, great plans. So for me, it's not about why has it taken so long? Yes, it has taken a long time, but we are here now and we're going to celebrate that and run with it. Janet, we've got your back. <laughs> All right. Well, Sarah, it's so good to hear that you're so positive and convinced about the whole situation. But there are some people uh, I know who are a little bit more concerned. I mean, I heard this argument. I mean, I I've read it on Internet, for example, that it's very trendy to jump on the diversity bandwagon and, uh, you know, just be a little bit tokenist, so to say, and, you know, have this female Asian uh, president and, you know, I don't know, uh, people of color in key positions, etc. But then how can we get convinced that change is not only happening on the facade of things? Well, we have to make, make sure as a people, as a collective, that it's not just a token. We want to see more employers take on people of different diverse backgrounds, um, inclusive um, disabilities, hidden disabilities and ones that are seen. You know, it's a modern day. It's a new day. Yes, there have been a lot of demonstrations with obviously Black Lives Matter and um, just generally throughout the history. There's been so much going on, but it's our role as the next generation of people to see that it's not a token. Let's keep up the momentum. With Janet's um, role, we want to see more people of her descent, more people of all different descents, just getting the top jobs as well, as well as um, English people, white people, everyone. We all deserve to have the same opportunities. So let's hope that going forward, it's not just going to be a token. It's going to be something that stays for good. All right. Well, do you think it would be more meaningful to cancel, perhaps, 
Oscars and come up with alternatives and build new communities rather than trying to fix Oscars year after year with new topics, etc. I mean, uh, do you think that trying to transform Oscars makes more sense than that? I think we should definitely not cancel the Oscars because it's a huge part of um, our well, American heritage the, around the world. is a huge, huge, big event. It's the, the glitziest event in showbiz, let's face it. And yes, there's so sometimes it can be a bit dull, but in previous years or this year's we've seen, it was lively again. So, you know, I don't think it's about cancelling something. I think it's about a, a, um, updating it and adapting so it, it's everyone, so everyone's included. It's it's um, one of the biggest dates in the calendar, and I would not like to see it cancelled. Just improved, you know. Mm -hmm. So you believe that a real improvement is possible in a system that was built on um, obviously old systems and old techniques and old dynamics. Definitely, mm -hmm. because it's a new generation of people coming in um, for the Oscars. It's not just the older generation. It's a new generation of people with more diverse views, more welcoming. So I think it's about upholding the good things about the Oscars and celebrating the things that we were hidden before and coming up with a format that just represents everybody and that's fair for everybody and that celebrates great achievement across everyone. All right, as for one last question, Oscars obviously apologized uh, for Sachin Little, Little Feather. Uh, 50 years after uh, the Brando protest. Do you find it to be meaningful coming at this point? I was so touched when I heard about the apology, not just because of the apology from the Oscars, but from Little Feather's reaction. I thought it was beautiful. She said, it's been 50 years coming, but we finally got it. And we've got to have a sense of humour about it. We must always keep a sense of humour about it. I mean, what a role model. Obviously, Native Americans, the struggle is real. They've been through so much. And to finally be acknowledged for her speech and what she went through, she was jeered backstage and by the crowd just because she stood up for Marlon Brando not being there to accept his Oscar because he was so into protesting for Native American rights. And there she was, a brave young woman in her 20s at the time, coming out and standing up for him. However, it was almost like the nail in the coffin for her career afterwards. For 50 years, she's had to suffer and, you know, it's, it's been hard. But now, it's, it's late, better let, late than never, we say. Or in the words of uh, Lizzo, it's about damn time. She got the apology and now we're all celebrating. Well, Sarah, it's really um, so much, it gives me so much joy to see all these changes uh, lifted up your spirits. It was very good to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us on Showcase today.